In this video covering the physical exam of the dog, we will go over how to do a basic home health check. When you observe your pet yourself, it allows you to pick up problems early and bring them to the attention of your veterinarian. It's become more important than ever to have an eye on your health and your pet's health. The healthcare system is overwhelmed and this includes veterinary offices. Due to delays in getting your pet seen, it's important to detect issues with your pet early before they become even bigger problems. Early intervention will always lead to a better outcome. Most people bring their pet in for an annual exam, but if you think about it, one year in a pet's life is more like seven years in our life. So checking in regularly is even more important, especially with seniors. That would be pets over six years of age and even earlier with larger giant breeds. Senior pets should be seen by a veterinarian every six months. I would like you to follow along at home with the cheat sheet linked below. It has some useful information and normal vital sign information that you can record and make notes that you can save and bring to your veterinarian at your next visit. Please do not attempt to do this if your pet has a history of aggression and consider a muzzle if they are testy when handled. My argument for a muzzle is that if your pet is ever injured and you need to examine an area, you might want to have one on hand. When I was thinking about making this video, little did I know that I would find a problem with my own dog, a three-year-old Border Collie who is the picture of health. I never expected to find a problem. So let's check her out when we get back. And here we have Ellen. She is a three-year-old Border Collie. And I'm gonna go over her with you with your handy checklist, which we'll go through together. Um, it's in the link below and you can download that and we'll, we'll make notes as we go. And you can bring this to your veterinarian with you know areas that you might have some concerns or questions. So let's get started. And Ellen, we we'll just look at your general uh, alertness. I think she looks a little alert and a little worried, but she, it's okay. Yes, she doesn't like cameras too much. So, Ellen, I think you you look pretty alert. You're you're sitting a little squarely. You want to make sure their stance is good. They're they're standing squarely, comfortably. Um, so general appearance, and that includes the coat that it's nice and glossy. And come on, let's show them. Show them your beautiful coat that it's not dry and no dander nice sheen to it and then general body condition you want to feel over the rib cage that um, there is no um, excess fat you can feel the ribs would be kind of like going over your knuckles you can you know they're not protruding too much and that you know you don't have to dig through fat to feel the rib cage so also when they're standing up you can look at them and see, come on, let's stand up, that they have a nice, um, if you look here, she's got a nice tuck of her abdomen, tucks up, and then from the top that there's actually a waistline, and it's not just like a, you know, there's, there's a little shape to the doggy. So that's the general appearance, skin and coat we looked at, and body condition, which is basically um, you know, that you know, the, the bones on the top of the spine are not protruding, that, that there's not excess fat. It's okay. Okay, and then we are going to go from head to toe. So we'll start off with the eyes. And we want to make sure that the eyes look nice and clear and glossy, which they do. We're going to look at the white of the eye. And you can lift back from the top and see there's no, you know, you see some blood vessels, but they're not injected. Um, if you see a lot of redness, uh, you wanna look for discharge, um, not too much mucus discharge, um, and that the, it's nice and, and clear if there's uh, moisture on the eye that it's clear. So the eyes we just did, now the nose, um, just you know that it's, you know, the, not too dry or cracked, it's shiny, um, there's no discharge. So then we're going to look in the ears. The ears, you just want to lift up and kind of look in the internal part of the ear. You can also take a smell and see if there's an odor to that. 
you don't want to have any any um, excess of odor from the ear so take a look at that and then uh, we are going to move on to the mouth so this is where I actually found a growth on my dog I was glad that I did this because I really was looking just like you would and so you would want to lift the lip and we're going to look at her teeth and actually Ellen ended up having a growth right here you can see the redness there and that was removed so um, we're going to monitor the area to make sure it doesn't come back but um, I was so glad that that I found that just by doing my own you know going over my own three-year-old dog which the last thing I ever expected to find was a growth but it's taken off I'm going to look inside the mouth you know no odor uh, there as well um, and then the last thing I want to show you is something called capillary refill time which is a measure of circulation so we're going to lift back the lip and you'll see it's nice and pink but when you when you touch it it should pink right back up so it blanches and pinks and that should happen within two seconds that is actually a measure of circulation so um, a lot of times i'll ask folks when they call about their pet that they're worried and I'll ask, okay, can you look at the gums? Are they nice and pink? And people are like, hmm, I never look at the gums. So it's really good that you're familiar with the color of their gums and their circulation. Of course, some dogs are funny about being around their mouth. So if they are, I would leave that to your veterinarian. But also an argument to train your pet to accept a muzzle because if they ever do get injured and you need to examine them, say a four or fox tail between their toes, or whatnot, you know, a lot of dogs, they hate having their feet touched. So, um, you know, if you train them to accept a muzzle, then, then that is actually a really good way for you to take a really good look at things. So, okay, then next thing is our lymph nodes. So we're gonna go over those on us, um, underneath the jaw, the angle of the jaw right here in the dog would be kind of like if you feel on the back side of the jaw, right underneath there, now the lymph nodes, they should be very small, maybe the size of a lima bean. But um, the most important thing is you don't feel a big lump right there. And then um, in front of the shoulder, there's also another one. Again, hers are barely palpable, so I wouldn't expect you to feel it. But you know, the whole thing is that you know what normal feels like and that if they're enlarged, you would, you would appreciate that. And then the last one is um, behind the knee. So I'm gonna see if I can get her to stand up. Stand up, stand up. Right, at, right behind the knee here, there is, so the kneecap behind the knee at the angle where, where it bends, there's some tissue in there that you can feel there. You know, again, hers is so small, you can barely feel it. So then there's also lymph nodes in the armpit and on the groin. And those, again, mostly are not palpable, but okay, sit down, sit down, and then, can't you lay down? Come on, up, up. Last thing we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna do some vital signs. So heart rate, um, that is something that, um, you know, if you don't have a stethoscope, a, a way to do it is just to kind of take, uh, obviously on the left side of your dog, just put your hand up against the chest and just, just you can feel the chest rise and fall and then just, just sit and, and wait and you'll start to feel the beat. I'm gonna feel on the other side, like I'm gonna come like this against her chest, right behind her armpits. I'm just gonna sit and then you'll go, oh yeah. You can start to sit, feel the rise and fall of the chest and then you'll start feeling that heart beating. So we're doing that now. And what you can do is count for 15 seconds and multiply by four. Or if your dog is really wily, count for six seconds and multiply by 10. So the most important thing is that you can recognize trends. So if your dog's heart is racing, uh, obviously, um, I would not try to count, like she's panting, obviously, but uh, a really good time to check the respiratory rate is when they're resting at night because dogs with heart disease will start to um, have elevated rest respiratory rates when they're laying down at night. So... You're almost done. Okay, 
And then we're on to temperature. Um, the average dog is not going to accept this. If your dog is very cooperative, I always encourage people to have a plastic thermometer on hand so that if they need to check their pet's temperature, um, they can and use a little Vaseline on the tip. Again, a plastic thermometer, you won't be worried about dropping it and you know, fumbling and breaking and with mercury going everywhere. Buy one for your pets, designate it for the pets and just set it aside for them, clean it between uh, uses with some alcohol. And that'll be a way to kind of keep track of their health as well at home. Uh, then the last thing we're gonna do is a body scan for lumps. So this, you just wanna maybe turn the paper over and make notes on the back side. Any, as you go over your dog, you know, feel for symmetry um, as you go over them. You can also kind of go over their joints their, when you scan their body that there, there's nothing that feels uncomfortable. And oh, you're good. Feel both sides, just kind of stroke down, you can turn it into a, like a little bit of a massage. Feeling back down the, down the back, down the legs, on the inside of the knees, feel for symmetry. Sometimes you can pick up, pick up early problems with the joints. Um, when you're feeling on the inside of the knee, when dogs have cruciate disease, there'll be a lump or a bump there. We'll call it right on the inside of the knee called a medial buttress. That's sometimes a dog with, you'll pick that up. Um, you'll go, gosh, that feels like more swollen or more firm on that side, but she, she's obviously normal. You can feel for symmetry of the thigh musculature over the hips. Um, that'll sometimes you'll pick up early orthopedic disease with your dog that way. And then lastly, the mammary chain, there's five mammary glands on either side. Um, you can just kind of stroke down the, the abdomen that those all feel normal. You could turn this into a belly rub if they lay down and, and just feel that everything feels normal. And then lastly, don't forget to check just the anal area, which again, dogs are not gonna appreciate that too much, but if you have a helper, um, you can have them help you take a look there as well, maybe when you take the temperature. But Ellen, you are a good girl. Come here. I know it's very, very nervous, but Ellen, thank you for letting us look and teaching everybody how to, how to do a home health check. So I recommend you do this, um, oh, maybe, Monthly, if you've got a senior, I guess senior is technically six, over six or seven um, for dogs, same for cats, over seven or eight. And then giant breed dogs, they're more senior around four or five years of age. But if you make notes as you go, keeping track of their weight, um, you know, every few months, and then uh, just, just take pictures, make notes. And then that way, when you go to the vet, um, you know, these days medical offices are busy, vets are busy. You have notes on what you know, you've been noticing. If you feel a lump, you can measure it. Um, an easy thing to do is like say, okay, well this feels like it's about the size of a lima bean or a lentil or a, um, a walnut so that you can remember, you know, you can actually try to measure it too. But I, I think if I imagine uh, an actual food item or something, I can remember, oh yeah, it felt like a lima bean. Now it feels more like a, you know, something larger than that. So. Um, it's an, just an easy way to kind of jot down and remember that. So Ellen, thank you. And thank you for your time and, and hope this helps you, um, you know, keep a, a, an eye on your own health and your pet's health at home easily.